If you're like me, school is ending for your kids and you're bombarded with school papers. As tempting as it is to shove all of those papers in a box and forget about them, I want to show you the easy system that I use to organize them. In my video, Paper Clutter, Easy Systems That Work, I shared the method that I've been using to handle kids' school clutter. In essence, I have a file folder for both of my school age kids. Whenever things come in from school, I immediately put them here. It gets them off the counter quickly and it gets them into a safe place where they won't become extra clutter. And to be honest, it's kind of nice to mindlessly put them somewhere safe so I don't have to make a decision about what to do with them in the midst of the daily after school chaos. One of the keys to this system being successful is that I go through these folders every single Friday. I only keep items that fall into one or more of these categories. Number one, something I know my child really cares about enough to keep. Number two, something I want to keep because it showcases a particular skill that my child has. Or number three, something that I want to keep because it shows my child's personality at this stage. If it doesn't make the cut for any of these three items, it will end up in the trash on the Friday after it came in. By the end of the school year, these folders are usually pretty full. If you've ever had a child in school, you can attest to the fact that they come home with a lot of paper. And I would dare say that a large majority of these papers are not things we really want to keep. I've said it before and I will say it again. If I kept every paper that my kids ever brought in, we would have paper everywhere. This system is me putting a boundary around those papers. At the end of the school year, I take what is left in these folders and I digitize everything. I do that by taking a picture of each item. You could scan it, but I found that a lot of the items that my kids are bringing home have some kind of dimensional component to them. Fruit Loops glued on a paper to make a rainbow, some yarn formation, etc. So taking a picture has just been easier. From there, I create a new album on our Amazon photo cloud storage, and I name it whichever child's name, whatever grade they've just completed, and the year. So this would be Blake, second grade, 2022 to 2023. Then I upload everything I've just taken a picture of to this album. It is safely stored and organized there, and I can access it quickly and easily. We have an Amazon Echo Show, and it cycles through our pictures. We can choose which ones it will show, so we can easily have it show our kids' schoolwork if they want to see it. From here, I decide what things we want to keep the physical copy of. Is it a picture that my kids made and they still want to look at from time to time? Or maybe it's a little book that they made that they still want to pull out and look through? Or maybe there's another reason why we want to keep it. If so, we keep the physical copy. I also involve my kids in this process at the end of the school year. We talk about what it is they want to keep, knowing that we have everything digitized too. The beauty of doing it this way is that I will always have the items in digital form, but my kids can enjoy certain things in physical form if they want to. Let me show you where we put the physical items that we decide to keep. My kids each have a box that looks something like this on their closet shelf. They call it their special box. I started one for each of them before they were even born. This is where we would put their ultrasound pictures, their hospital bracelets, special cards from friends after they were born, etc. This particular box belongs to my almost three-year-old. But as my kids get older, the box needs to be bigger. So I've recently transitioned my school-aged kids from their smaller boxes to this box. This is my older son, Blake's. At the time I purchased this from Walmart, it was around $10. The hanging folders come in a pack of 12 for about $5. I needed more than 12, so I also used a few that I already had on hand. Each grade has its own folder with the exception of pre-K and kindergarten, which I consolidated into one folder. I only did this because my son's pre-K and kindergarten years were both partially remote due to the pandemic. So he had less school papers for those years. My daughter, on the other hand, will definitely have enough for pre-K and kindergarten to each have their own folders. Even though my son is only in second grade, I went all the way through 12th grade just because I didn't want to have to do a new folder every year. I know I think I will remember what grade they were in when they made certain things, but I know I'll probably forget. So I also like to label the back of whatever it is that they made with their name and the grade they were in when they made it. This is also helpful if the kids have been looking in their special boxes and maybe things got taken out of the correct folder. These file folders only hold so much, so this is how I will contain them. I know that as my kids get older, they care less and less about what they made in previous years. So I think this will kind of be a natural process that they eventually may want to get rid of some things that they made in the past. Now, as far as what we do with the things that my kids make at home that they want to keep. My kids love to do art and to create things. 
And I think in a lot of cases, the magic is in the process of creating and not necessarily in the end result. Art is a very regulating activity for my daughter, especially if she's had a bad day or maybe she's in a bad mood. Letting her do art and just create is very cathartic for her. I talked about this in my paper clutter video, but kids often want to keep every little thing they make. And for those of us trying to strike a balance between sentimentality and keeping a clutter-free home, this just isn't realistic. It's important for me to remember that everything that my child makes is not their favorite. The longer I've been using this system, the better I get at knowing what they truly care about. Occasionally they will make something and ask to put it right in their special box, which I'm happy to do. I'll link below my video, Paper Clutter, Easy Systems That Work, where I talk a lot about how to handle kids' artwork. I have this folder by my back door for my kids' artwork. I use the same criteria that I've referenced earlier in deciding what to keep. Something I know my child really cares about enough to keep, something I want to keep because it showcases a particular skill that my child has, or something I want to keep because it shows my child's personality at this stage. I've decided that in order to make this easy, I will take care of their artwork at the same time I take care of their schoolwork, so the end of the school year. Since I date the pictures before they go into my kids' artwork folder, we'll be able to easily tell when they make them. I will also upload these to the Amazon Drive, but for these ones, since I can change the date on our Amazon Drive, I'm just going to make sure that the digital date matches the date on the paper. So in my kids' special box, in addition to a folder for each grade, I have three additional folders at the end. One for artwork, which is where I will put the art that they make at home, one for miscellaneous special items, and one for cards and notes. I know the folders will eventually take up more space as they get full, but right now we have enough space in the back for larger items that would belong in the special boxes. Like these two books that my two older kids have. These are scrapbooks from a family reunion that my husband's family had a few years ago. Just because something goes into the special box does not mean we are keeping it forever. Like I mentioned earlier, my kids will sometimes ask to put something in their special boxes. Sometimes it's artwork they make, sometimes it's a card or a picture from a friend. If they ask to put something in their special box, I let them because I know that they care about it. But my eight-year-old will occasionally bring me something from his special box and tell me it isn't special to him anymore and he wants to throw it away. I'm fine with that. Just as a side note, after I got married, my parents brought me a large box full of papers from when I was in school. It was interesting to go through and look at things and reminisce, but in the end, there was a very small percentage of things that I actually cared about. The criteria I used to decide what to keep is the exact same criteria that I used for deciding what to keep for my kids something I cared about enough to keep, something I wanted to keep because it showcased a particular skill, or something I wanted to keep because it showed my personality at that stage. I kept very little, and what I kept, I took pictures of, uploaded them to our Amazon photo storage in an album called Jamie's School Years, and tossed the originals. So I think for my kids to get a digital file of their schoolwork when they're old enough will be pretty nice for them. And who knows, maybe someday I'll do some digital scrapbooking for my kids. But in the meantime, I know that their schoolwork is digitized, so it's in a safe place, and it's organized in a way that I can easily locate it. This has been a really simple system to maintain, and one that I know will be easy to maintain going forward. If you're curious to know more about the way that I contain the rest of the paper clutter in my home, including more about my kids' schoolwork and artwork during the school year, I explain it all in more detail in my video, Paper Clutter, Easy Systems at Work, which I will link below. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I would love to hear in the comments below what you do with your kids' school papers. Thanks for watching, friends. Have a great day.